welcome the First United Methodist Church of Cadore, Texas. My name is Stella Finau, and I am privileged to be the pastor here of this wonderful church. All right, so just a couple announcements that I have. First of all, I do want to thank you to the Beckermans uh, for bringing the load of pains yesterday. And so uh, that was uh, several hours of hard labor work. So I definitely thank Raymond and the guys for uh, for doing that yesterday. And I know that some other people were also involved with that. Ronnie, uh, Glenn, thank you, Glenn. Uh, thank you also to Maureen uh, for the help that she did. I'm not sure all because I took off after a couple hours. Thank you everyone for your help and for continuing to help with our pumpkin patch. And so you know today we finished the setup uh, for the pumpkin patch. And so if you are able to hang out after worship today, we're going to try to put stuff uh, out on the yard and hopefully we'll also get the pallets and I think Brian and, and Philip or whoever else can help with that will uh, get those pallets as well. And then next Saturday is the day that we have all been waiting for since last year. The day that the pumpkins arrive. And so they're scheduled to, to arrive uh, next Saturday morning, which is the 3rd of October. So if you're able to help, uh, that's great. If you're not able to help, uh, you need to recruit some of your family members and some of your neighbors uh, to come and help with that. And Maureen, yes. 9 o'clock a.m. Yes. Be here with a thermos of coffee <laughs> and non-aching muscles. And if you ever want to get rid of the pastor, she hates spiders. <laughs> <laughs> We have the work schedule, uh, so we uh, are opening it once the pumpkins arrive, and we do have the work schedule that is online, and so I know that some of you have been calling some folks to sign them up, so just make sure that they are signed up online, so that way there's no conflict in the scheduling, and I did print out a copy of it uh, this morning. Did you leave it out there? It is in the narthex. I know that several people have already signed up, so thank you for that. So another thing is our chicken fried chicken dinners. Everybody loves uh, Chris Kelm's uh, chicken dinner. So the tickets are available in the narthex. Uh, they are wrapped uh, by 10. So however many tickets uh, you feel that you can sell or you can purchase for your neighbors, uh, just let us know how many tickets you have taken and just give me the money when you receive it. All right, and one other last announcement uh, that I can think of right now, next Sunday is a big Sunday. It is World Communion Sunday. Uh, uh, we're going to try to do something new. Uh, let's have worship outside with the pumpkins underneath the oak trees. And so you can come, or those of you who have not been able to come and you are watching this online, you can pull up in your vehicles and you can just sit in your vehicles if you so choose. Uh, otherwise, you are also uh, able to get out of your vehicle. Uh, you can bring your own uh, chairs, lawn chairs, or you can borrow one of our chairs. So we're going to try that next Sunday. And so just come up prepared to have worship outside. That is, of course, provided that the weather uh, is, is good. Because you know, we're, we're fair weather Christians, right? <laughs> and so uh, just, just saying, if you will please rise and join us in our call to worship. Please respond in bold. Come, let us worship God who provides for us. Even though we whine and complain, God hears our cries. Lift your voices in praise, for God has come to comfort you. Thanks be to God who forgives and heals our wounded souls. Come, celebrate God's steadfast love. Open our hearts, O Lord, and let us truly listen to your words. Amen. Please join me for the opening prayer. Loving God, we come this day to worship with so many things on our hearts and minds. We are drawn away by problems and cares. Heal our spirits, 
open our hearts, help us be your disciples. Amen. thirst as well. 
Amen? Amen. All right. Please rise for the second hymn. and mercy. We thank you for this day. We thank you for every day, for every opportunity that you give us to get a little closer to you and to help bring peace into this world. God of hope and healing, you have heard the cries of our hearts. And things surround us when they all seem to be falling apart, you hold us together. Sometimes being faithful is hard. It's especially difficult when we're out in the wilderness. We want to be faithful and to continue serving. Yet, when things get tough, we buckle and cave in. And we just want to go back to the way things used to be, to the familiarity and comforts of our lives. We lack the courage and the strength to work for you. You have reminded us that you will continually be with us, that you will continue to provide for us, that you will continue to make a way for us, and that we need to place our trust in you. Your love will sustain and heal us. Your mercy and your grace will give us the courage and the strength, joy and peace. As we have come before you this day, offering our prayers, For those who are near and dear to us. Let us remember that you constantly lift and carry us in your love. Bring us to the knowledge of your mercy and powerful love that will never leave us. Prepare us for ministry in areas of need and desolation. For we ask these things in Jesus' name, and as he had taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gifted with the grace of God, and clothed with power from on high, let us now offer ourselves to the building of God's kingdom. Please bow your heads for the offertory prayer. God of infinite patience, just as Moses was worn down by the complaining of the Israelites, so you must tire as we pray for things we want, and not the things we need. As we give our gifts to empower your church, help us to see the things that really matter, places where we can provide for others in need and deepen our trust in you to take care of us. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to take us to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God of hope, speak to us this morning your word of truth and your word of life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't know if you have ever experienced real thirst before, but I don't believe that, that I have. I mean, yes, we do get thirsty occasionally and we get a drink, but that's not the type of thirst that I'm talking about. The type of thirst that I'm talking about is the one that the Israelites experience. The one that... It may mean life or death. I'm talking about the desperation of the Israelites, what they were feeling. They didn't know whether water, where water was going to come from. They didn't know whether they were going to make it or not. I can probably think of a few occasions where I was really, really thirsty, but never to a point where I didn't know where my next drink or my next cup of water would come from. Never to a point where it may mean life or death. Well, that's our story that we have today. We do continue with the Exodus story, and this is probably the most important story in the whole entire Bible. It is in the Hebrew Bible. And for the Jewish people, this is the story, the Exodus story. The story is so important to our Jewish brothers and sisters that they recite it at every prayer, every morning, every evening, at every holy day that they celebrate and remember, at every Sabbath, 
they recite the story of how God delivered them, of how God liberated them, of how God sent the angel of death, but passed over their homes, of how God made a way for them through the Red Sea, of how God turned a bitter water into drinking water, of how God rained down manna and quail from the heavens. And today, our story of how God led them to drinking water. This is an important story, for it gives them hope. It gives the Israelites hope. It gives the Jewish people hope, and it should give us hope as well. Because if God had done it in the past, God is doing it in the present, and God can certainly do it in the future. It's been a month since the people of Israel had left, had left Egypt, and God delivered them from Pharaoh. The angel of death passed over their homes and God made a way for them through the Red Sea. They were complaining to Moses about no water, no food, and again, no water. Today they are complaining to Moses, we're thirsty, there is no water, give us water. How could you lead us into the middle of the wilderness with nothing to drink? It was so much better for us in Egypt. It was so much better for us to have just remained there. At least we had a full meal. At least we had drinking water. What are you going to do about it, Moses? Are you just going to let all of us die out here in the wilderness with nothing to drink? Is God with us or not? And where is that place flowing with milk and honey anyways, Moses? Is this some kind of joke or what? We made the mistake of trusting you. We made the mistake of trusting God. We're all going to die out here. We're angry. We're mad. This is probably the beginning of protests. The people were angry. The people were mad. If they had signs available for them, they would have probably made signs. Moses has got to go. No water. We're all going to die out here in the wilderness. The people lost hope in themselves. The people lost hope in Moses. They lost hope in God. Moses, he then cried out to God and said, God, these people are ready to kill me. Help. Send help. Send help now. And God told Moses to go on ahead of the people. Take the administrative council and trustees with you and bring your book of discipline. Just kidding. <laughs> But that would be a modern day thing to do. Moses, take your staff with you. Take some elders with you and go on ahead to that rock and I will already be standing there waiting for you, waiting for the people and there I will provide water for my people. Water has always played an important role since the beginning of time, since God created the world, since God separated the heavens from the earth. Water truly is life. We can't have life without water. My poor plants will tell you. The ones that I keep trying to plant every spring at the parsonage, and they keep dying because I keep failing to provide sufficient water because I keep trying to plant tropical flowers. It's not the right soil. 
It's not the right environment. It's out of place. It can't survive the Texas heat. So it dies and yet every spring I always have renewed hope to plant new ones. Yes, it is quite an expensive experiment for me. My dogs even know how important water is for them because in the middle of the night, if my dogs run out of water, guess what? They come and wake me up because they have run out of water. A couple of weeks ago, the city of Taylor turned off the water for our area. And I'll tell you what, it was pretty inconvenient because it was off the whole day and I had to hang out here at the church all day. <laughs> but this story, you know, it reminds me of water coming out of rocks like waterfalls. I'm sure many of you have probably seen beautiful waterfalls. But on the flip side of this, water can be very dangerous. Too much of it, and it could cost you your life. The strong current can certainly sweep you away. Very often here in Central Texas, we may receive a flash flooding alerts on our phones, letting us know that it's too dangerous to go outside. And if you're out there to watch out, for those low-lying areas where it could be flash flooding, where it could sweep your vehicle away. And we also need water for baptism. And especially during this pandemic time, during this pandemic season, we are told to wash our hands very often to wash it with water and to wash it for a period of time. And yet, for over a billion people, access to clean water is a problem. They don't have access to clean water. And even here in the U.S., there are some places like Flint, Michigan, who do not have clean water, or at least the last that I heard, but they are working on it. Access to clean water changes everything. Access to drinking water changes everything. Yet here in the U.S., we like to flaunt our abundance of water, where we water our grass. And to the rest of the world, that seems insane. We're here in the U.S. we have water parks and we have running water at our homes nonstop where we take 30 minutes shower. And each time I am reminded when I travel around the world in other countries that they conserve water, that even their toilets have a half tank in a full tank. I have never once seen that in the U.S. But yet this story that we have for us today, the Exodus story, is more about water. This is really a truly human story where we can all connect with it because we have probably asked the same question that the Israelites asked Moses. Is the Lord with us or not? We don't ask it when everything is going well. It is when things go wrong that we ask the question. It is when we don't get our way that we ask this question. It is when we see chaos all around us that we ask this question. It is when we are in the middle of this pandemic and people all around us are dying that we ask this question. Is the Lord with us or not? It is when we suffer greatly that we ask this question. It is when we experience a tragedy that we ask this question. Is the Lord with us or not? 
It is when we are in dark places that we ask this question. It is when we are facing death that we ask this question. It is when we have nowhere else to turn that we ask this question. It is when we don't see life that we ask this question. It is when we lose all hope that we ask this question. It is when we thirst for that drinking water, as the Israelites did, that we ask this question, is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord with us or not? Like the Israelites, we do not stop long enough to consider what God has done in the past and what God is doing today. Our needs, are always surrounded in the present and in the future. Our concerns are immediate. We want God to deal and to solve our issue and solve it, God, before sunrise. Our faith is strong when the results are immediate and favorable. But what about the long pauses of silence and stillness when darkness descends upon us and there are no responses, no answers from the heavens above. What happens when our expectations are not met and we are in the wilderness without water in sight, without hope in sight? Is the Lord with us or not? Our suffering may differ from one person to the other, but we get through it, you see. We get through it by not seeing God as a solution waiting to happen or a quick fix to numb our pain. Rather, God is seen as being present with us in and within our challenges that we experience daily. God joins us in our darkness and in our wilderness, and our faith should sustain us even when things do not go our way, even when we do not have all the answers, even when we're angry, even when we're mad, and we're so mad at God for allowing things to happen. Why didn't God stop that from happening? But here is the good news, church. Here is the good news that even when we protest, even when we're angry and upset and mad at God, God is still with us. God has already gone ahead of us and waiting at that rock to offer us water, to offer us life. And we see this. We see this in the person of Jesus Christ where he was already waiting at the water well to offer that living water to the stranger. God has already gone ahead of us, waiting to offer us that living water that will satisfy our thirst. And we shall not be thirsty anymore. So remember this, remember that to church, that as we move through the wilderness, just like the Israelites, we have failed all the tests. All the tests that God has given us, we have all failed at it. But thanks be to God that God still this provides a way that despite ourselves, that despite our failings, God still provides for us and God still makes a way for us. And we all need to hear that. Because in the midst of our struggles in life, in the midst of the dark places that we may find ourselves, 
God is with us. And God has already gone ahead, gone ahead into our tomorrow, waiting for us at the rock, waiting for us at that water well to offer us that living water. Amen. Please rise for our closing hymn.